Gump was everybody's favorite. I mean, just looking at him in the net, you had to kind of smile and say, I hope this guy does well. The little pug nose and the aggressive approach he took and sticking his chin into everything. And uh, the, the way he played was really entertaining. I don't know if there was a goaltender who's ever played who let it all hang out with his emotion facially when they would score against him. I remember he used to drop kick the puck into the crowd. If he got mad, he'd fish the puck out of the net, and he'd put it on his stick, and he'd kick the stick. He could do it really good. They would go right up over the glass and into the crowd. That was him, and boy, that was the kind of, of closeness that fans were able to have with the players in those days. Then it's back to Howe. Howe getting in front of the net. He shoots. Oh, and Wormsley kicked it off to the side. They don't tell you how to stop it. They just tell you to stop it. It doesn't matter what you look like or how tall you are or how much you weigh or anything. As long as you can stop the puck, you're a goaltender. I really don't think he cared too much what happened to his kisser if he got a few more cuts or bruises on it. Of course, goalies, you know, are a breed apart. Well, when you get hit, you just went in and they lay on the table and stitch you up. Because it was all numb around the, the, the cut anyway, so it didn't bother you. It's only when they got, I got hit here and knocked the tooth out and, and they, they uh, stitch up your lips. Boy, that hurts. That's a tender spot and around the nose is tender. But uh, on the head is nothing. I got a hard head, that's why I never wore a mask, I guess. But uh, the, the main thing is, uh, you know, to each his own. Some liked the mask, some didn't like it. And I was one that didn't like it. In the pre-mask days of the NHL, goaltending was a dangerous occupation, and avoiding injury a top priority. While facing Chicago's hard-shooting winger Bobby Hull, Gump's luck ran out. And there's 30 seconds to go when he's coming down, looked in front of the net to see if there was anybody he could pass it to. And just as I turned around, the puck was right there. It hit me right in the ear. I went down to a count of about 110. The players gather around him. Uh, the team doctor came skidding out from the bench. Trainers came out. And everything uh, in the rink had gone si Everyone had gone silent. So they give me the smelling salts, and I came to, and I stood there, and... 30 seconds to go when the game was over. And for that whole half minute, the fans applauded, clapping their hands, an occasional whistle, as Gump stood there in the net in this final half minute in tribute to, uh, to what had happened. I went down to the dressing room and had a shower, and uh, I had to, was on my way to the hospital, and I went out to dressing room door and Bobby Hall was standing there with his shirt and his tie and his suit coat wondering if I was all right or not because he thought he'd kill me I guess. In 1968 Gump Worsley was awarded his second Vezina trophy and the Montreal Canadiens were again Stanley Cup champions. The following year they would defend their title as Gump captured his fourth cup but even in the heat of playoff action Gump had a lot more on his mind than stopping the puck. He was paranoid on the subject of airplanes. He wouldn't fly anywhere. Uh, they used to have to send him by train or even by private automobile between cities. He was a white knuckle guy, we used to call him. He'd get on a plane and he'd be, you know, he probably needed a couple of uh, shots, you know, after uh, he'd get on a plane, to, you know, just to calm him down a little bit. But uh, he was, he was, petrified of going on the airplanes like you're just holding on the whole time and you know it takes so much out of you I went through a shrink and Sammy Pollock was a general manager they arranged everything and I went to see a shrink and uh, the shrink told me he says uh, the only one thing I could tell you change occupations I looked at him I said change occupations are you crazy and I went to Sammy Pollock and he said, what did the doctor tell you? He said, to change occupation. They fired the shrink from the Canadians. <laughs> the stressful combination of pucks and planes would soon prove too much for Gump. 
and in 1969 he decided to heed the professional's advice and leave the game behind. I phoned my wife when I quit Canadians. I said, I'm quitting. She says, come on home. And uh, I went up and I told Sammy Pollock. I went to his office and I said, Sammy, I, I don't want to play anymore. I'm quitting. Nobody quits Canadians. I said, I just did. And I turned around and walked out. Never to see him again. In 1970, the fledgling Minnesota North Stars were in desperate need of goaltending help. Management felt that the recently retired Worsley was the answer. Ren Blair was our coach and general manager at the time. And we just didn't have a strong second goalie, backup goalie at that particular time. And uh, uh, the word was out that he was going to try and get Gump Worsley. They had lost 21 in a row. And they were floundering, and Cesar Maniago was tired, and uh, Kenny Broderick was there, and he wasn't playing that well. And uh, I said, call me back in an hour or so, I talked to the wife. So I got off the phone, and the wife said, why don't you go and finish the season, and then that'll be it. We had gone into a tailspin, and this just continued until we got gumped. We considered each other as partners rather than rival goalies, and I think this is, uh, th this is why it created a strong bond with us. I went home after I finished playing that year, and then the next year in June, the phone rang, are you going to play? No. July? No. August? I'll ask my wife. So I spoke to the wife, because I was nearly 40 years old at this time. And so she agreed that we, we'd move down there and, and I ended up playing three more years. And then my last year I signed a contract, one year to play, four years to scout, and I ended up scouting for 14 years. There'll only ever be one gumper in, in hockey, and, and it was him, and, and he, he played that role. He was able to carry that image right through to the end of his career when he was playing in Minnesota. And that was good. Hockey doesn't have those kind of characters. An intense competitor, Gump Worsley played his final game in 1974. Through 21 remarkable seasons, he won four Stanley Cups, a Calder, and two Vezina trophies. Always a fan favorite, Gump was one of the most entertaining netminders the game has ever seen. When you, you're playing, you figure it never end. But it, it ended, and I was happy with my career. Hockey was my life. I have everything that I own. I can thank the hockey. I got a home. I got four kids, a wife. I don't owe any money. Thank God for small favors. Thank God for a good wife. And uh, I, everything I own, I can thank the hockey.